Hello boys and girls. Guess what time it is? It's story time. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another story time with Miss Marcia. Um, before we get into the singing, do not forget to click that subscribe button, click that notification bell so that you won't miss another posting and leave a comment. I'd like to hear from you and let's get into the singing. It's story time, it's story time. You haven't got to pay a dime. If you want to have some fun, get a comfy seat and sit right down. Now listen very carefully, for you can learn as much as me. Make believe in what you hear, these stories I shall read to you. La 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 And our story today is Sweet Land of Liberty by Deborah Hopkinson and illustrated by Leonard Jenkins. Sweet Land of Liberty. Okay, so let's see what this book is all about what we're gonna learn from this story it's a little long so just to warn you it's gonna be a little long Oscar Chapman grew up in a poor family in Omega Virginia his neighbors also struggled to get by even the walls of his two-room schoolhouse were bare Oscar and his class had a candy pole and raised five dollars to decorate their school the teacher asked Oscar and his cousin, Grace, to buy a picture to hang on the wall. On Saturday, when Oscar's father took the wagon to town, Oscar and Grace rode along. They stopped to look in a junk shop. One picture caught Oscar's eyes. This man whiskers make him look distinguished. He seemed more than just an ordinary man. Grace liked the man's face too, as well as the picture's pretty gold frame frame the price is just right four dollars and 95 cents let's buy it on monday morning oscar hung the picture on the wall next to the blackboard he stepped back proudly it looked fine indeed see the picture who's that the next afternoon oscar's teacher wrote to his house. Oscar was surprised at what she told him. He was being expelled from school. What did I do? Oscar cried. Two of our school board members say you disgraced the school by bringing in a picture of Abraham Lincoln, his teacher said. There's a meeting about it tonight. I'm on your side, but there's nothing I can do. Abraham Lincoln? So that's who he is, said Oscar. He'd never seen Lincoln's picture before. It wasn't in the history book they used at school. But Abraham Lincoln was president of the United States, Oscar protested. Seems like his picture belonged in a school. Well, the Civil War wasn't so long ago. Some folks around here still have hard feelings about it, his teacher said. And not all of our neighbors think blacks should have equal rights. Oscar nodded. He knew exactly what his teacher meant. Let's see Oscar there. On the night, he was expelled. Hmm, he couldn't go back to school. Oscar ran to the school and peered through the window. He saw one of the school board members toss Lincoln's picture into the wood box. Oscar ducked down until the school was empty. Then quick as a flash, he pulled off the screen and climbed through the window. He plucked the picture out of the wood box and hung it back on the wall in its place of honor. Oscar stepped back and nodded at President Lincoln. He was stirring things up just like Mr. Lincoln, but maybe... That was the only way to get things to change. Oscar was lucky. 
Later, the third board member convinced the others to let Oscar back into school. But Oscar couldn't forget what had happened or the prejudice he saw around him. He made up his mind that if he ever had the chance to fight injustice, he would. As it turned out, Oscar got that chance. When Oscar grew up, he left his two-room schoolhouse far behind. He worked hard to go to college and he became a lawyer. In 1939, when Oscar was 43, he had an important job in Washington, D.C. Oscar worked for the government as Assistant Secretary of the Interior. One day, Oscar's friend Walter White came to see him. Walter's skin was so light, he could have lived as a white man. But Walter devoted his life to working for his fellow African Americans. For weeks, Oscar and Walter had been worried about the same problem. How could we help? Marian Anderson. So this book is a book all about history. Marian Anderson's beautiful voice had won her thousands of admirers in Europe. Yet in America, in her own country, those were still close to Marian be because of her race. Howard University had invited Marian to sing in Washington, D.C. in the spring of 1939. They hoped she could sing in Constitution Hall, the largest concert hall in the nation's capital. But the daughters of the American Revolution, the organizers that owned the hall, had refused, saying it was available to white artists only. Before long, the entire country was in an uproar. Eleanor Roosevelt, the first lady, resigned from the Daughters of the American Revolution in protest, but no one had found a solution. The concert was just a few weeks away and Marion still didn't have a place to sing. Now Walter White had an idea. Oscar wouldn't be ten strike if Marion Anderson could sing at the feet of Lincoln at the Lincoln Memorial. That's it, cried Oscar, remembering the picture of Abraham Lincoln he hung in his school so long ago. That's the very place she ought to sing. A concert at the Lincoln Memorial will be free and open to everyone. It would show that Americans could come together for justice. The Lincoln Memorial had never been used for a public gathering. But Oscar wasn't about to let that stop him. Oscar went to see his boss. Harold X, who agreed to talk to his boss, President Franklin Roosevelt. Oscar stood by anxiously as X called President Roosevelt to ask his permission. Tell Oscar to let Marian Anderson sing at the top of Washington Memorial if she wants to, President Roosevelt said. It's a wonderful idea. Oscar had a big job ahead of him. He wanted to make sure people in the government show their support for Marion. He knew some wouldn't want to come, like the school board members back in Oscar's hometown. They didn't believe in equal rights. Oscar decided to put them on the spot. He sent invitation by telegram to every important government official, senator, and representative. Not only that, he asked the messenger to bring back a signed receipt for each one. No one would be able to claim he didn't get an invitation. Smart, huh? One man waded up to the telegram and threw it down. The messenger told Oscar, he said, That squad Oscar Chapman is stirring up trouble. Oscar laughed. Stirring things up was exactly what he aimed to do. On Easter Sunday, April 9th, 1939, people gathered early near the Lincoln Memorial. Thousands came in buses from Philadelphia, Marian Anderson's hometown. At first, the day was cold and cloudy, but soon the sky cleared. By five o'clock, when this concert was set to begin, the crowd stretched from Lincoln Memorial to the Washington Monument. 
Constitution Hall, where Marion Anderson had hoped to sing, would seat 4,000 people. But now, 75,000 people of all ages and races would hear her. How cool is that? When Marion stepped forward, she looked out on the vast sea of faces. She could feel a great wave of good were pouring out from everyone. She took a deep breath and sang from her heart. Marion chose to begin by singing not just about, but to the country she loved. Changing the words of a beloved old song, a hush came over the crowd as her powerful voice rang forth. Right there. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. To thee we sing, land where my father died, land of the pilgrim's pride. For every mountainside, let freedom ring. So I can't sing that well. I would have sung it to you. And the con as the concert ended, Walter White caught sight of a young girl in the crowd. He saw her stretch out her hands towards the great singer. Tears streamed down her face and hope gleamed in her eyes. Walter remembered that girl for the rest of his life. There she is. Thousands of people heard Marian Anderson sing that day. It was the largest concert crowd the Capitol had ever seen and the first major gathering at the feet of Abraham Lincoln for the cause of civil rights. But not the last. 24 years later, Martin Luther King made his famous speech in the same spot. And Oscar Chapman? Well, he set about opening parks and swimming pools in Washington, D.C. to everybody, whatever the color of his or her skin. Oscar Chapman was a man who liked to keep stirring things up. After all, sometimes that's the only way to get things to change. Marian Anderson's powerful rendition of America, often known by the first line, my country, tis of thee, is available at, you can check it out on the website. And if you listen carefully, you can hear her change the lyrics singing to thee we sing instead of the traditional of thee I sing. Marian Anderson knew well that America had much work ahead to let the freedom ring. Learning from Oscar Chapman helped me to realize how much things had happened to us as children can change our lives. Sometimes we can go on to change other people's lives. And every once in a while, we might even change the course of history. So, the end. Just remember to be great. Be great. You're awesome. Be great. So, I hope you enjoyed the story. This was um, for Black History Month, Sweet Land of Liberty. It's a uh, nonfiction, so you can check out on Google. You can check out on the internet um, anything that was mentioned here that you would like to know more about. So don't forget to subscribe, like, share, click that notification bell so you won't miss another story from Storytime and Smarcia. And I'll see you next time around. So take care now and bye.